Hello there, it's uh, Dimitri Dassin, and I'm a nephrologist in uh, private practice in Seattle, Washington. I would like to share with you the as a case of unusual presentation of a DPTV1 patient. In the next slide, uh, you see the presentation. It was a 59-year-old uh, female who I was called about from the hospital, from the resident uh, in the hospital, who told me that uh, he would like uh, me to have a patient follow-up on a lady who is admitted uh, with uh, pyelonephritis, uh, gross hematuria, and renal cysts with calcifications. And the uh, presentation was so confusing that I just kind of gave up at this point and said, okay, I'll see patient as outpatient. And uh, when she came up, uh, uh, here's what I was presented with when I looked at the uh, uh, hospital medical records. Um, Number one, uh, yes, she was admitted to the hospital with left flank pain, gross hematuria, which she describes as V8 juice. Her serum creatinine was 1.18 with GFR 47. She has a history of mechanical macho valve, and she had a suboptimal INR at the time of her presentation. It was 1.8. She had no fever and no dysuria. She had normal WBC count, and she had negative urine culture. Yet she was diagnosed with a pyelonephritis uh, by radiologists, polycystic kidneys, and parenchymal calcifications. So she was sent to me for a patient follow-up. So when I put her uh, CAT scan um, on my screen, and then you see the uh, photo of that uh, uh, on the right, uh, indeed she had cysts in the kidneys, indeed she had some parenchymal calcifications. Uh, some of them could have been associated with the cyst, but hard to say. And she had a, in the left kidney wedge-shaped uh, area of uh, um, inflammation or looking at her history and presentation, it was pretty obvious that uh, this was uh, renal infarct. Kidney contours were not particularly disfigured and the kidneys were not enlarged, so I was puzzled whether she does have polycystic kidney disease or not. Uh, so I took her family history, and her mother is still alive at age 80, no evidence of polycystic kidney disease. Father died at age 59 from cancer with no evidence of polycystic kidneys. She has three siblings, uh, 49 to 62 years of age, and three kids, 35 to 43, with no evidence of disease. But she does have parental aunt uh, on her father's side who does have polycystic kidney disease presumed of the um, so diagnostic considerations at this point were hematuria, which I think was relatively easy to explain um, as an embolic infarct. Uh, um, she has no family history of ADPTD. Um, she has multiple cysts with a relatively preserved renal architecture. She has nearly normal renal function uh, for a typical uh, ADPTD1 patient, uh, and she has multiple parental calcification. So I could not really put all of these things together uh, clearly enough to make a certain diagnosis. And at that point, I thought about ordering a renocyte test uh, to clarify whether she has some alternative explanation for renal cystic disease and calcifications, one of the syndromes, uh, uh, or uh, just combination of uh, the two different uh, abnormalities. So test came back positive for PKD1 gene, uh, autosomal dominant, uh, with a particular variant. I um, will not dare to read you uh, what it is. It's on the screen. And it is obviously likely pathogenic. So in this case, uh, benefits of renocyte test uh, um, is that first it confirmed diagnosis of ADPKD1 in this patient, uh, which clarified uh, and also clarify the reason for some of the typical presentation. This particular variant, this particular mutation is a so-called non-truncating mutation that is associated with about 10 years later onset of uh, end-stage renal disease in patients who are affected, even though it does affect the DPTD1 gene. Uh, so that made sense. Also, once you diagnose the patient with the DPTD1, and obviously if there is any um, any history of suspicious death in the family, you would screen them for cerebral aneurysms. In this case, that was uh, not the case and that was not needed. Um, 
We ruled out other multiple genetic causes for renal cyst, uh, hematuria, and parenchymal calcifications. So all these are three separate uh, issues. Uh, it provided uh, valuable genetic information for patients, siblings, and offsprings because now they don't need to, to wonder if they have renal cysts, uh, whether they have a PKD or not, and they have already more or less uh, mapped uh, uh, the scale of progression and onset of, onset of uh, end stage renal disease. And there's also changes management. Remember, she was also referred uh, for follow-up for calcifications uh, involving renal cysts. In uh, ADPKD1, uh, those cysts are not at any more increased risk of developing renal cancers uh, uh, than in a regular population. So regular CT surveillance and radiation and obviously expense and inconvenience is spared for this patient. Uh, in conclusion, I think that was a very valuable uh, uh, test. I think I got great support uh, from the Terra team that uh, helped me to understand the mutation and its clinical implications, and both patient and myself were very satisfied uh, uh, with the service. Uh, thank you again for listening to my presentation, and have a great day.